Welcome to Riding Mower King. In this video, we're going to be looking at this Craftsman snowblower. This has been sitting here since late winter. I started working on it, and it uh, it doesn't want to start. It'll crank over, but uh, the carburetor needs to come off. And on this one here, this style engine, you're going to see why it's such a project to get this carburetor off. And you have to put everything back on to see how it's going to run. It's not simple like the old flathead engines were. So we're going to start working on this, pull the carburetor off, and see what kind of condition the rest of the machine is in. Now, like I said, I had already started on this. So I got the recoil starter off of it. And you also need to disconnect the push button for the electric start that's mounted over here. There's a couple bolts you have to take off over there. So we're going to pop off this choke handle here. A little hard to get to. should slide right off you have to pry on the inside it's real important that you pry towards the center here so you don't break it on the outside and like I said there is a couple over here you have to take off but those are off already so now this seems to be all one piece all the way up here So we're going to take those two out. And there appears to be one in the back here. All right, so it's getting looser. We're going to see about taking this whole metal cover off. Two more bolts right down here. And that one looks like it might be buried behind that cover. Of course, it is behind that cover. So that's uh, another example of why mechanics don't like engineers. And uh, if you're thinking maybe you'll just bend it out of the way, this here goes down underneath the gas tank. So your best bet is to just take that cover off. Which, in this case, that's co that cover is going to come off anyway to look at the belts in there. One more thing to take off here. Luckily the belts look okay, but we'll get to those later. Now maybe after this one, we can get this cover off of here. Maybe we can get to the carburetor after this. So now we got the metal top out of the way, which is a, a guard for the muffler. This is the muffler here. So you don't burn yourself. Well, now we're, we're still not at the carburetor. This still has more pieces that need to come off yet. And we got the hose for the primer. Now you want to be careful that you don't break this. Otherwise, you're going to have to get a whole new primer button. So now we got this out of the way. We're not at the carburetor yet. So this has a, this cover on it. This is where your air would go in. So it takes the air from in here, the heater box where the muffler is, so it's warmer air. This is where the air goes in. So, if you're like me, and you work on these things a lot, and, uh, you know, say you get called to somebody's house, like I do sometimes when the snow is falling, this is the reason they're going to say, no, I can't, I'm busy. Because if they know what kind of engine this is, they're not going to want to take all this apart just to get to the carburetor. So now on the older ones, you could get inside this cover and spray some card cleaner in there and pull the rope just to verify that the engine will run. Even though you know the problems in the carburetor, at least you know the rest of the engine will run. On this one, the air intake is all the way in here. So you have to get in there to get any carb cleaner inside to see if it'll start. And uh, that's not very easy to do. 
So this here is like the top of the intake, and then there's a bottom, which is part of this cover. So now there, the breather just pops right off. So that's not a problem. So here you can see, this is the part that the air comes through to get into the carburetor. You know, it goes down through there, so this is why, you know, if you call your mower guy, your small engine guy, when he's trying to clean his driveway and he knows what kind of engine this is, he's going to be busy. He's not going to come out. This is why. It took all this, and I had already started before taking some of that off over there. So now we're at the bowl. And these, uh, these don't have any fuel shutoff. They come right out of the tank right into the carburetor here and I don't know if there's any gas left in here it's not real easy to tell because you have to take this out of the way well luckily that one came out so yeah there is still liquid in there so this here is what I like to use for pinching off fuel lines it's really made for brake lines, but it works good on these too. I'm not a big fan of putting vice grips on these because you can easily over clamp it and damage the hose on the inside. Where with this here, you kind of get a feel. So we're gonna leave it like that and hopefully that's good enough. Now this carburetor is really ready to come off. It just sits on these studs. So we'll slide this off. Try and leave it attached to that. Bring it up this way. If we can leave that attached, that's less to remember how to put back together. We'll take this off. So it's not flapping around. And this is, this is plastic, so you want to go easy on this. So we got the little spring. Take that off nice and easy. And then we rotate this, and this is going to come right up out of here. Once we get it at the right angle. Just like that. Now we can get this carburetor off. So we're going to take this carburetor apart and I'm going to do it without one of those big fancy metal workbenches. I would like to have one, but I just don't have space. I got too much everything else. In here looks clean. It's got some color to it because it's getting old. Got a little bit of dirt there. Oh, I just happen to have one that actually fits in there. Okay, so this here is the actual jet. And uh, you should be able to see light through that hole. So, yeah, I can see light through there, but I can tell it's closed. That This gas gets like a film over that. And it's not going to suck any gas through that. So, we're going to clean that. So these are just your regular torch tip cleaners and you want to find the smallest one and these are a little rough they're almost like a file so you you want to clean off the edges a little bit not enough to make the hole bigger just enough to clean all the dirt off and I can already tell without holding it up to any light, I can look through here, I can see the table on the other side. So that was the main reason that this would not start. If there's any kind of obstruction, that, just a little bit of film over that, no fuel is coming through there. 
Now this is open all the way through. What this does, this goes up in the, where the, where the air is flowing through. This comes up into the center here where the air goes through and the air going over this, there's a, it creates a venturi in there the way the carburetor is shaped and it pulls the gas through these holes. So these all need to be open. They all, I can actually see through all of them. So now we're going to get out our friend the carburetor cleaner. Yeah, we got three sets of holes. That way it doesn't matter which way this is facing. The air is going to go around it and pull the fuel out. So that's what you want to see. You want to see it come out of all them holes. If I get it in the first one. Just like that. Now you want to be careful that this pin doesn't come out because nothing holds it in there except for the bowl when it's all back together. So we'll squirt a little bit up in here. Somewhere on this is an idle circuit under here. So we're going to take that out while we have it apart. And they give it this nice little funky shape so you can't use a regular screwdriver. But we're going to see what happens. This, this thing's only plastic. If we need to, we'll reset the idle speed once it's running. Now we'll work this up out of here. Just like that. Now we'll spray down this hole, and it's going to come out right there, just like that. And this hole, it's going to come out the center, just like that. So now that's open, and we got this little hole right in the center there. That's the kind that's probably going to take a brush, a bristle from a brush. So now this is your idle jet that we tried to clean with a bristle from a wire brush. And that hole was too small, but I still want to make sure there's no dirt in there. So we're going to try and clean it with these drill bits that I bought a while ago. And if you do stuff like this, it would not hurt to invest in these. Well, I got to the second to the smallest one. And it actually went in the hole. And stuck in there. And you have to get one of these little arbors. To hold this because these are so small so now we're going to use this little drill bit here and we're going to clean this the idle jet now you want to be careful that you only clean the dirt if you happen to clean up any brass because it's still a little brass jet the epa is not going to like that because if you clean this too much it'll cause that to run smooth and not surge and uh, you know there's people that don't like that Because they run these things so lean. That's why this hole is so small. They run these so lean for emissions that sometimes they're just not even usable. I think I made it in there. Yep, I made it through. So the drill bit got through the little brass jet on the end. I could see it through this hole here. Could see the drill bit in there. So now we're done with that. All right, time for reassembly here. So first, 
first we put our idle jet back in and it's got two flat sides to keep it from turning fits in there real nice now our idle speed screw We're going to go with that. We installed the emulsion tube, which only goes in one way, and then we put the main jet in. So this all looks good in here now. Looking at the needle valve to make sure that moves right in here. We don't want that to get stuck. Then you want to make sure that the, the bowl is down inside the groove before you tighten it down. Then we're ready to put the carburetor back on. So luckily the inside of the carburetor was clean except for up there at the jet. And that's about the top of where the fuel level would sit. So that had fuel and air probably right about at that right spot that the fuel dried out and created that film. Now, before I put the carburetor back on, I'm gonna drain this gas out. Put some new gas in. Now that we have the carburetor on, we can put the cover back on and see what happens next. So now we're all reassembled and ready to fire it up. All right, so set our throttle up like that. And got our choke on there. A couple squirts like that and away we go. Okay, so the electric start needs a little attention. It's not loose, so we're gonna have to look at that. Probably not engaging all the way. Well, after much cranking, we have to figure out why else it will not start, which leads us to checking for spark. All right, so it does not want to do anything. Oh, well, let's get that spark plug out once. I'm not seeing any spark. And this little problem is why it turns into such a long video. All right, I think the next step is gonna to be to get to the coil. Maybe that we need a coil or one of these wires could be shorted out. Could have rubbed against something and be shorted out to prevent any spark at all. So that's gonna be the next step, dig deeper. So we're going to end this one right here because this is turning into a long project and it's going to look like this before it goes back together again because of uh, what I find. So you'll want to hit like and subscribe so you can see the second part of this. You don't want to miss it.